One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and I want you guys to sit there, close your eyes, and imagine for a second. What I want you to imagine is what is one position group that the Jaguars just have not really improved since the late 90s? Sit there, think for a little bit. Take a minute. You got it? You got an answer? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that answer is the wide receiver position. Since the 90s and the era of Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell, the Jaguars really have not had a solid wide receiver group since the er, since the late 1990s in the era of Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell. And it's honestly funny to go back and look at some of these wide receivers that the Jaguars have had in the past. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to rank the worst of the worst. Today, we are going over the worst wide receiver groups in Jacksonville Jaguar history, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, let us waste no time. This is the top five worst wide receiver groups in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Number five, 2018, D.D. Westbrook, Keelan Cole, Dante Moncrief, and D.J. Chark. Now, I might get some hate about this in the comment section, but if you really take a second and look at this wide receiver core, it's not helping anybody. Like, it, it was a hard wide receiver group to be impressed by. They lost their number one wide receiver at the beginning of the year in Marquise Lee, so different guys had to come up and step up in different moments. There were some shining moments, uh, especially from D.D. Westbrook. Westbrook had... A good 2018, a lot better than what a lot of us had expected, except me. I knew D.D. Westbrook was going to be a star from the jump, but everybody else, man, just under, underperformed. Dante Moncrief signed that one-year $10 million contract and was supposed to prove it and prove why he deserves the money. And you know what he did? He straight robbed the Jacksonville Jaguars because he didn't earn anything. There was a couple of flashes and a couple of times where Moncrief was able to get open and he did catch a couple of deep balls. But he just was not good enough. And then the probably most disappointed player, disappointing player in 2018 was DJ Chark and Keelan Cole. And now I have a lot of faith and belief that DJ Chark is going to be able to turn it around in 2019 and really become a tremendous, tremendous player. But when he was out there playing wide receiver, he was just so awkward. You know, he looked so confused out there, didn't look like he knew what he was doing. And, you know, it was a real, real big letdown for a second-round draft pick just a year ago. But like I said, I have a lot of faith that he could turn it around in 2019. But the biggest disappointment in 2019 was our last year, the year prior's leading receiver, Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole was second, I believe, overall in the in the league in drops. This Jaguar team led the league in drops as a total uh wide receiver group and I know I know I know who the quarterback was and trust me he did throw some out of reach balls but it's not like this group did not lead the league in drops all four of these guys had a couple of drops that really made you disappointed and really took us out of games when we had an opportunity to get back in them so though you may not agree with me I think the 2018 Jacksonville Jaguar wide receiver core is one of the five worst of all time number four 2010 Mike Thomas, Mike Sims Walker, Torrey Holt, and Taquan Underwood. Now, all you David Garrard fanboys, which there are a lot of you out there, especially after Blake Bortles got released and everybody's talking about how he's the second best quarterback of all time, and everyone says you need to put some respect on David Garrard's name. And a lot of reason why David Garrard doesn't get a lot of credit is because these are the wide receivers you put in front of a strong armed athletic QB like David Garrard. You put in guys like Mike Thomas, who that year caught a Hail Mary pass, so congratulations, that was a dope. Mike Sims-Walker, who was a number one wide receiver, but wasn't necessarily a true 
number one wide receiver, if you know what I mean. Taquan Underwood, you know, was a practice squad guy that somehow found his way all the way up to number four on the Jaguars depth chart, and he also had injury problems. He'd get hurt time and time again. And then a way out of his prime, Torrey Holt, who the Jaguars signed in free agency, hoping that he could bring some of his veteran uh, status to help these young wide receivers. But alas, that did not happen. None of these wide receivers reached over a 1,000 yards, and none of these wide receivers uh, were able to impress the Jaguar community or impress on the field overall with their stats. Uh, Mike Sinswalker led the Jaguars in receiving yards that year, followed by Mike Thomas, Torrey Holt, and then Taquan Underwood uh, with those four guys, but they were not numbers to write home about, and it is one of the worst overall groups that the Jaguars have ever had on the field at the wide receiver position in 2010. Number three... 2011, Mike Thomas, Jason Hill, Cecil Shorts, and Jason Dillard. You're telling me that you expected David Garrard, this guy who had a lot of potential and a lot of talent, don't get me wrong, but you put these guys in front of him. You put Mike Thomas, Jason Hill, undrafted rookie out of Washington State, Cecil Shorts, and Justin Dillard in front of him to be his number one targets. What? What in, the, what in the world? Like, what are you doing to this guy? You know, these are all drafted talents by the Jaguars, and they all suck. Like, like all four of them were terrible. This is why the Jags weren't able to do, you know, big plays in the passing game. This is why everybody knew the Jags were going to be running with Maurice Jones-Drew. It's not because we had a bad quarterback back then. It's because we had bad, bad, bad wide receivers that could not get the job done. Like I said, Mike Thomas and Sims Walker, I mean, Mike Thomas was in the last list. He joins now Jason Hill, who never again had over a 1,000 yards. I believe his career highlight was catching a 48-yard touchdown pass. And then after that, not a whole lot happened for Mr. Jason Hill. Cecil Shorts ended up being a crowd favorite after that. Uh, he ended up being the number one receiver in Jacksonville for a long time, especially uh, after Justin Blackman left. But uh, he did not end up reaching a thousand yards in any of his any of his seasons. He didn't really peak until 2012 when he paired up with Justin Blackman for the uh, for the first time, and he really emerged as the number one option for Blaine Gabbert back then. But during this season, he was not necessarily that number one wide receiver he was in 2012, in 2011. And then you have Justin Dillard, who I. I've, you know, I've talked about in the past. You don't remember this guy? Don't blame you. He was nothing to write home about. He wasn't a spectacular wide receiver. But these wide receivers are a big reason why the Jaguars of 2010 were never, ever really that successful because nobody in the front office gave the quarterback that they were building around targets to throw to. Number two, 2006, Ernest Wilford, Matt Jones, and Hankton. I didn't write down Hankton's first name because he's literally that forgettable to me and he did not see the field very much. You know, Ernest Wilford and Matt Jones, those were the two wide receivers that the Jaguars were banking on in 2006 to help him out with Byron Leftwich. And you already know damn well what that result was, and it was awful. Matt Jones had the intangibles to be a really solid wide receiver in this league. Unfortunately, he just did not meet expectations. And unfortunately, he also could not stay out of trouble. I talked about it a little bit in my biggest, uh, I mean, ranking all the Jaguars first round picks from worst to best. He just could not, could not stay out of trouble. And the Jaguars were doomed from the start. But the Jags, one of their biggest, biggest downsides, no matter who's in the front office, it's been the same way since the 90s. You know, no one wants to address the wide receiver position at depth. You look at that in 2006, you know, Matt Jones, that was the guy that the Jaguars were banking on. They should have built around him, and they should have gave them more pieces than just that of Matt Jones. Because once you get a rookie receiver in there, you know he's going to be your number one guy. You need to build around him to get other targets so the whole focus is not just on that one guy. And the Jaguars were notorious for doing that. They did that with Justin Blackman as well. They didn't build around him. They didn't get, you know, any other talent around him except for those that were already on the team because they thought that was good enough no it was not the Jaguars needed to build more of a wide receiver base around these two first round picks but they failed to do so 
maybe if they were able to do something with building around him, maybe that would have kept him out of trouble. You know, maybe they would have performed better. But no, the Jaguars are stubborn in their ways and think that one player in this wide receiver group is going to fix an entire football team. That's not not the case. You look at 2018, the Jaguars signed Mr. Marquise Lee to a long-term contract. And we're hoping that he was going to be the number one guy to stay on the field. He gets hurt, and the Jaguars really get exposed at the wide receiver position due to drops, due to un, you know un, unfortunate circumstance and all of that. But like I say, D.D. Westbrook, he emerged. He did play good. But everybody else, man, they just failed to meet expectations, and that's because the Jaguars fail to get two or three solid number one wide receiving options. Or at least a true number two or a true number three. You know, it seems like when the Jags go out and get a true number one wide receiver, everybody around them is practice squad material. Or maybe a fourth wide receiver is playing our second wide receiver. You know, we just can't have that. And that was the situation in 2006 with Matt Jones. It was the same with Blackman. It was almost the same with Marquise Lee as well. The Jaguars just need to build a whole core of wide receivers if they're ever going to be successful at that position ever again. And coming in at number one in the worst wide receiver group in Jacksonville Jaguar history, 2013 with Cecil Shorts, Justin Blackman, Mike Brown, and Ace Sanders. And saying Justin Blackman was a part of this wide receiver group is not saying anything. Blackman ended up getting suspended on the bye week, so it was mostly Cecil Shorts, Mike Brown, and Ace Sanders, ladies and gentlemen, with the mixture of Chad Henney and Blaine Gabbert at quarterback. What could possibly go wrong? There is a lot of case. The Jaguars have never been the number one uh, NFL draft pick, so in no season have they been statistically, I mean, well, overall, win-loss-wise, the worst team in the NFL. But this could be one of the worst teams in NFL history in 2013, this Jaguar team was so difficult to watch, and most of it coming because they had no wide receivers, man. They had no wide receivers to throw to. Cecil Shorts was our number one guy, and he was clamped, you know, because he, if he's going up against in 2013 like a Darrell Revis, there is no way. There is absolutely no way we can rely on Cecil Shorts. This is like your mutt team, right? This is your mutt team going up against a 99 overall team, and you have a 73 gold Cecil Shorts as your number one wide receiver. That shit just ain't going to fly. And the Jags had no wide receivers to improve, especially after the Justin Blackman suspension. You have a wide receiver from Liberty College that used to play quarterback in Mike Brown, but I was always a big fan of Mike Brown. I don't know why, but I just remember watching him. I'm like, this guy's going to be a stud, you know, but, you know, he never ended up doing much. So having him on the roster was just like, what? He's number three. This guy used to be a quarterback at Liberty, but he's a number three wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars in the NFL. For Liberty? Come on. You know, like, that's just, that blows my mind. And then you have the speedster, Ace Sanders, who is way more of a special teams guy, but he had to come in and play the wide receiver position because the Jaguars were just so short on bodies, and he was not a reliable wide receiver either. This could be one of the worst wide receiver groups ever in NFL history. The 2013 Jaguars with shorts, black men, brown, and Sanders, man, that's just Body blow after body blow after body blow, knowing damn well you ain't going to be able to pass the ball against any good passing defense because your wide receivers are so below average and it hurts so bad because you know heading into a game that you have no chance, especially if you have these clowns catching the ball for you. And that was my top five worst Jaguar receiver groups of all time. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks, or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you'll have a great day.